Having trouble winning games in Madden? Help me! Help me! Bruh. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys the easiest way to win more games. And it has nothing to do with glitches, money plays, or cheats. So if you guys want to see what legit gameplay tips I'm using to get results like this. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Come on. Stick around after the intro. The For the fastest, cheapest, most reliable coins on the market, check out my coin sponsor, MMOXP.com, and use discount code MONEYSHOT to get 5% off your order. Link in the description below. The plays used in today's video can once again be found in my San Francisco 49ers offense and multi-D defensive ebooks. If you guys want more help, you can instantly download these or any of my ebooks simply by clicking the links in the description or the top pinned comment. In today's video, I have another game against the Dallas Cowboys, as it feels like everybody is suddenly using them since they beat the Eagles last week. But I am also going against a very good player, being ranked in the top 5,000, which I didn't know until after the game. But before I get into that, if you guys like the content and want to see more, please make sure to be a subscriber, hit the like button, and let me know in the comment section. My first tip to winning games more consistently is being more consistent in your approach and come up with a system and define it as much as possible that means using the same things all the time so that you can perfect them things like using the same team the same playbooks and even the same formations in those playbooks as much as possible the same goes for coaching adjustments as i use the same ones every single game i start this game out on defense and my next tip is how to read an offense as this is something that players struggle with the most reading an offense is very different than reading a defense since you don't know what is being being run. So instead I will have to look to other factors to try to figure out what my opponent is going to do. But you always have several key indicators available to you on screen at all times to help you out throughout the game. Indicators like the scoreboard, the time clock, and the down and distance. As these three things will be the most important tools to use when guessing what your opponent is going to do on offense. Another would be what formation your opponent is in. Which will always show up here as long as you don't pick your play first. So you should always wait for your opponent to pick a play so you can choose your defensive personnel to match or at least get close. On this first play, my opponent is showing a three tight end set from under center in single back, so I should try to match personnel. Since people usually run more than pass from under center, and three tight ends is a heavy run indicator as well. So I should try to match with my 3-4 odd defense for size, but I choose my new quarter normal defense instead, as I sometimes force using specific defenses so that I can make videos about them for you guys. But this isn't a problem that you guys will have, so match personnel in a situation like this. This can change though, based off a of situation. Now if the score was different, say I was up a touchdown with under 2 minutes left in the 4th quarter and my opponent has no timeouts, then I don't really care what my opponent is in as I will still play the situation rather than my opponent's personnel, but I will get to that more in a little bit. I have broken down all of the offenses and defenses that I am going to use in today's video, so if you guys want to see more, I will have links in the description for all of them as well as some on screen at the end of the video. On the first series, since I am heavily outmatched in size, my opponent does what a good opponent should do and take what the defense gives you. He has a size advantage, so he's going to use it by pounding the rock, and he's also going to run a hurry up offense to keep me in this so that he can play bully ball. All things that I also do and highly recommend. For what it's worth, I actually think this defense is doing a pretty good job of slowing him down as we get into third down situations, but the goal of the defender is to get your opponent into more predictable situations. That means third and long situations, fourth and long situations situations as third and short can be any play in the playbook, making them very hard to predict and very easy to convert for your offensive opponent. And to be honest, I was waiting for either his running back to get tired or I might have eventually called a timeout, but neither happens as he gets a big run play instead to take an early lead and it looks like my defense was the one getting tired, so I probably should have called a timeout. Now whether on offense or defense, I always recommend breaking down your entire playbook to just three formations and use them all the time. Try to choose a pass heavy formation, a run heavy formation, and a balance formation that you use for both as the score and down and distance will usually dictate whether a player will run or pass more than anything else so since i'm only down a touchdown i start by running the ball and having a lot of success on the next play though my opponent immediately switches to a large defense to match as he presses the entire defense so i try to take what the defense gives me by calling a deep passing play but he either has a really glitchy blitz or the edge rushers in dallas are just on another level because this defense starts dropping me before i can even finish my drop back i try to run through his spread look on the very next play and the end still gets around and makes the play again. He stays in cover three in the next play, so I try to win up the seam, but Goddard can't hold on to fourth a fourth and 16. 
My next tip is to play the percentages, which is really what winning in Madden is all about. A lot of Madden players would go for this, but this is a really low chance of converting. There is a much higher chance that I don't get it, and I give my opponent the ball inside of my territory, almost guaranteeing him a score of some kind, and putting me down two possessions. So I have faith in my defense, and I decide to put it away. In the beginning of the video, I talked about how score, clock, and down a distance are always available to you as a defender, even if you know nothing about what your opponent is likely to do. These three things will still tell you what your opponent has to do to win. But once the game starts, you will also be able to cross-reference this with your opponent's tendencies, which they will develop over the game. On the first drive, my opponent only ran the ball and didn't pass once. A pretty strong indicator that that's his tendency and how he wants to play. So in the next series, since I am more concerned with winning this game now rather than showing a new defense, I switched to the 3-4 odd, which is my run-heavy defense, and I would have done so on the first drive if I had gotten back to the huddle. At least now I am matching his three tight end sets somewhat, as I also call my best run defense in the cover four but he gets a big run once again and tries to hurry me up before the end of the quarter so maybe he just likes to play that way seeing that he likes to play like this regardless of what defense i'm in means that he either likes to play like this all the time or he had so much success the first time that he's just trying to repeat it either way i know that i have to stop the run first and since he is being so predictable i feel comfortable enough to run commit on the next two plays finally getting him into my first predictable situation that he'll most likely have to pass to get out of so he lets it go back to the huddle so he can change to a passing formation like a shotgun look and I use this chance to go back to my smaller pass defense that I was using earlier. I mentioned how you will want to minimize your offense and defense to three formations a pass heavy, a run heavy, and a balanced. You're going to want to do the same thing on defense as this really removes the decision making process in these moments. He started the game out run heavy so I don't have to think about it. I just go to my run heavy defense. Now that he's in a passing situation I switch back to my pass heavy formation in the quarter normal. It's that simple. As the less decisions you make in these situations the better as this will allow you to stay focused on the task at hand and worry about the little things that really make the big difference. Now aside from the down and distance, the amount of receivers on the field is also a huge indicator of whether or not your opponent is going to run or pass, as speed is the most important thing in the passing game. Where the quarterback lines up is also an indicator as well. From a shotgun look like this, the run play selection is very limited, as the running back can really only go in one direction since he has to cross the quarterback most of the time to get the ball, meaning that you'll most likely see inside or outside zones. But when under center, you can run inside or outside and in either direction with a much larger selection of run plays. He decides to run the ball again anyways, and the running back very predictably gets shut down for a loss. But this guy decides to go for it and picks it up and then some. Excuse me, pardon me, coming through, special needs as the Eagles are just looking like the bad news bears right now, and this game looks just like it did in real life. Damn it! Now down 14-0, I need to score quickly to keep pace in this game, as almost every game is decided by the clock more than the scoreboard. So I will switch up to my pass-heavy offense, as I need to move the ball quicker, and my pass-heavy offense in this playbook is the gun split close. Now my opponent also knows I need to score fast, so I can't just start chucking the ball down the field, or I'll make things worse, probably throwing interceptions and taking sacks. So I will continue to take what the defense gives me, and in this situation, it will be underneath. Since my opponent will be playing for deep passing, which usually means cover three. My next tip is knowledge of the game. Cover 3 is one of the best deep passing defenses, but every defense also has its weakness. For cover 3, since I'm on a hash mark, I streak the B receiver to pull the cornerback back to get the corner route open underneath. He stays in on the next play, so I take the running back underneath for a big catch and run. I run a hurry up this time as well to keep him in it, because cover threes are also vulnerable up the seam between the cornerback and the safety. So since I know all the weaknesses of this defense, I'm able to pick his coverage apart for my first score. But if you don't know how to beat these defenses, that's exactly what I go over in my ebooks. Links in the description if you want to know more. This also highlights my next point about being predictable. If my opponent would have switched up his defenses more, I would not have been able to score so easily. I did score a little too quickly though, as I give him the ball back with plenty of time, but since he has only passed once so far on fourth and ten he's coming predictable on offense as well so I continue to play the run first and now it appears that I've stopped it enough to the point where he is now going to be forcing himself to pass which is a win for me he is still methodically going down the field with short passes, but the real battle is won in the red zone. Which brings me to my next tip, bend but don't break on defense. The reason players struggle in the red zone is because when the field gets smaller, so do the options. And now that I have him in a phone booth, I no longer have to cover things like deep passing, as there is no deep field to cover, making my opponent much more predictable, as I only have to cover about 15 yards of space. Most people like to run down here, but he has done nothing but pass this entire drive, so that's his new tendency. Since I don't have any deep field to cover, I can now do things like bring the entire secondary down to be more aggressive and on the very next play since he needs nine he forces it to the running back and i get the interception Got 
gotcha, bitch. When he should have just taken what the defense was giving him, nothing, taking the field goal and the two possession lead. In the second half, I get the ball, and since I only need a touchdown to tie, I'm going to switch to my run heavy ball control offense in the eye from close. But that doesn't work out the way that I planned as I get pushed back and I have to punt away. To make things worse, I don't even get a good punt, giving him the ball at midfield. I make sure to keep switching up my defenses though so that I don't become predictable but he is slowly killing my chances of winning with every completion as the clock is my biggest concern. We get a big sack on the next play though, and my opponent's biggest mistake here is that he's not playing the clock the same way, as he is running hurry up to gain an advantage that he really isn't getting, as he finally takes the field goal and gets the two possession lead that he should have took earlier. Now with only 6 minutes and 20 seconds left, I go back to my pass heavy offense since I have to score fast, and it works pretty much the exact same way, as I catch him switching to some sort of cover too, and I split the safeties for a big play, before calling a hurry up to keep him in it and doing it again as my two scoring drives both came from this offense while keeping him in a defense that he couldn't change making him very predictable now down three and almost in the fourth quarter the scoreboard and the clock is the only indicators i need to know that my opponent will most likely want to run the ball so i have to stop that first as he predictably runs on the first two plays before using an rpo to barely get the first and now he's become a passer since the run plays weren't working which is a win for me once again, but these RPO plays are just as hard to stop as he gets into scoring range and now it looks like he wants to score to put the game away as he uses another broken RPO play to take a two possession lead again with under three minutes left. From here, you know I have to go back to my pass heavy offense and run the hurry up the entire way. So I try to get out of bounds to save as much clock as possible, which means taking these check downs underneath this cover three once again, before I read man coverage to get inside the five and scoring with just under two minutes left. From here, knowledge of the game comes back into play as I have to go for the onside kick. But luckily I know the secret, as all you have to do to dramatically improve your chances of getting the ball back here is press Y or triangle before the kick for a high kick, and then let the kick meter fill up to about 80% so that it can pass 10 yards Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. And we get the recovery. Time is no longer concerned now as I have the ball and the means to win or at least tie, but I want the win. So I'm going to take pretty deep shots while also letting the clock tick down as it does me no good to leave time left on the clock regardless of however many points I score as I get the go-ahead touchdown with only 15 seconds left. Now needing a touchdown, he does a pretty good job of getting close with the three timeouts that he has left, but not close enough. So that's it, that's the video. If you guys want to see more about the offenses or defenses I was using in today's gameplay, just click the links. And until next time, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bits and more. Link in the description below.